Um, I'm back again, guys. And you, if you see me sitting here like this, you know we're about to have a serious conversation. In today's video, we are going to talk about something deep. You're probably looking at the title like, what does this girl have to say again? Well, we are going to talk about why tourism is not going to be the answer to Ghana's questions if these four things are not done beforehand. So without wasting much time, let's jump right into the video. Hello family and welcome back to another video. It's your girl Gabby Mack. For those of you tuning in for the first time, welcome to my channel. On this channel we talk about lifestyle, travel, and all things Ghana. Uh, sooner or later, if you go check out my other videos, you know why I talk so much about Ghana. It's dear to my heart. There's always so much to you know learn and to discuss when we are talking about Ghana. It's one of my favorite places to be, so I hope you guys really, really enjoy this conversation. Um, and for those of you that are my returning subscribers, welcome back. Thank you guys for always supporting and tuning into my videos. And before we even jump into the conversation, Please, if you already enjoying it, just click click the thumbs button. You know what I'm saying? Just click it, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. So anytime I drop a new video, you guys will be aware of it. So without wasting much time, we want to drop, jump into the topic. So if you guys have seen the title already, I said that tourism will not build Ghana if we do not do these things. Your mind is probably jumbling all around the place. Why is she saying tourism will not build Ghana? Tourism will build Ghana. I know some, a lot of you guys are probably already thinking that. So now, before I get deep into the, you know, into the conversation, I want you guys to understand I'm not saying that tourism is not going to build Ghana at all. I am saying that if we do not do these things and put some of these things into place and have certain conversations and have certain policies in place, yes, tourism will not do anything from Ghana. So let's jump into why I believe that tourism will not build Ghana if we do not do these things. So if you guys watched in my last video, I really, you know, broke down and talked about uh, why, well, I wouldn't really say I broke down, but I brought up attention about uh, Ghana being a trend and why I think it's a trend. Uh, do I think it would last? Do I think people will continue to have an interest in Ghana? Um, it was pretty much a, you know, a started conversation. I just kind of wanted to get people's um, perception. And it was, it was a really, really, really good conversation, I have to say, that I had in the comments section. Uh, so many people with so many thought, you know, ideas and process as to why they believe Ghana is a trend, why it's not a trend. Uh, I'm still having conversations with people about it, and I really, really think that you know it was a good, it was a good conversation starter for sure. Because I know a lot of people believe that you know it, this is the way forward for Ghana because of the attention that it's getting, and I absolutely believe that. But if we don't sustain, um, you know, and if we don't take advantage of all this attention and put it in the right way, and have the right people and leaders backing all of this it's gonna just be in vain at the end of the day so that's pretty much the beginning of the conversation that I you know I started about this whole uh, Ghana being a trend stuff now today we are talking about um, tourism mainly uh, you know with the trend that Ghana is you know facing and and all the attention Ghana is getting right now tourism is you know it's the main thing right now that's bringing people to Ghana um, would it sustain it you know would tourism really put Ghana in the place where it really needs to be um, I believe that after this, after this conversation, I know a lot of you will have a lot to say. And I'm, I mean, I'm all for it. I'm all to hear. You know, I'm all for the the pros and the cons, and you know, the negative comments, the positive ones. I'm all for it. It's all about a, you know a conversation, and and that's why I do this anyway. So let's jump right into it. So number one, the first thing um, I think that. Ghana and Ghanaians need to take into consideration when we talk about tourism and tourism and if it is going to build Ghana is number one. I believe this is my first uh, um, point that I'm making here is we need to allocate funds to the right people to fix Ghana. So you're probably like, what do you mean allocate what funds? Okay. In the course of four or five years, Ghana has had an influx of tourism. Now with tourism, we know we're talking money. We're talking about a lot of money. Now, a lot of people that I've spoken to in Ghana can say they don't see where that money is going. They don't, they don't see it. So the question is, where's the money going to? 
um, and um, in whose hand or is it in what project or in what um, you know in what organization is these money you know is the money going into so I, that's the reason why I say we need to allocate funds to the right people so once we find out where the money is like who, who's in charge of all these funds that are coming into Ghana like granted I know some people um, it's going straight into their pocket if you own a business you know that the tourism is you know helping you in that way but i know in the in, in terms of the government there's definitely some money being pushed into the country so i'm pretty sure people are wondering where's the money going to now to me to be honest i mean exactly who the money is in who's i think whoever has the money is important right but at the end of the day um where's the money going directly into what channels and that's what i really want to focus on not necessarily who has the money who has access to it but more of where it's channeling to so one of the big things i think um this money needs to allocate to is um fixing the roads for many years uh, governments have come in and you know parties have come in and they're just constantly using um roads as a campaign tactic you know roads we're gonna fix roads we're gonna fix roads and to me i'm just like why are we in this year 2023 still fixing roads in ghana and Ghana, the roads should be have they should have been fixed years ago but okay they're not but at this point if we really want tourism to enjoy ghana and stay in ghana we really need to allocate funds to fixing roads and not accra roads we mean everywhere expanding highways making it more safe for people to travel to other places because most people come down to ghana and hear that the road is not safe to go to such and so town and that's the reason why they don't go and visit other places or they feel like the distance is too long because of the fact the roads are not fixed. Um, it, I mean, I've been to places like Boti Falls. If you've ever been to Boti Falls and you see the road that leads up to there, I don't think you ever want to go to Boti Falls again. I mean, it's a nice place to visit. Would I really suggest to anybody to go? I'm like, no, oh, go, but just be careful and go with somebody that you actually that actually knows the roads. A lot of tourists like to travel to countries and they like to rent cars and drive places themselves. I'm sorry, Ghana's not one of those places that you can really do that. You really need someone who can go with you, who knows the roads, who knows the towns that can take you places. But I feel like if we really want to attract tourism to come to Ghana, make them feel comfortable, make them feel safe, we need to put these things in place so that when they do travel there, they are able to feel free to rent a car, to rent a bike, or you know, to, to go rent, you know, just get on a bus and say, hey, I'm going to the next town and I'm gonna go and explore it. And that all comes from allocating the funds to the right direction. Um, another place that I feel like they need to allocate the funds to is current tourism sites. So Boti Falls is one of the places that I mentioned. It's in the, if I'm not mistaken, it's in the Volta region. Um, so these sites such as Boti Falls, um, a lot of these sites when you go, um, I think Boti now is in a very much better condition. When I first, I, I should definitely make, make a note of that. When I first ever visited Boti Falls, it was back in 2017 and I can tell you that the road there was not the best and I can tell you once you get to the site as well I just felt there was so much more that they can do to these sites to really make people want to visit there are locals who have never gone to these places these sites and I believe that this these sites are sacred they're they're important they're part of Ghana's history they're part of what makes Ghana it should not only be push that foreigners come down and to visit these sites why is the average person in Ghana not able to visit these sites? It's either it's not accessible to them, they can afford to go there, or they just don't have any interest because we don't really push for people to actually go see these places. So it seems like it's only become a place where tourism visit. So I think allocating funds to these sites and putting them in a better, you know, situation, you know, making sure that the roads leading there are safe, making sure that, you know, it's attractive. Like if I'm going to go and visit a site, like let's say Boti Falls, you know, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, <laughs> I don't mean to just be pounding on Boti, but you know, that's the one that came to mind. But Boti Falls, when you go and visit, you see, you, you, when you're going to the waterfall, you take a bunch of steps to go down to the waterfall. Now, I kid you not, the time when I went in 2017, you would, if you saw those steps, you would not want to climb on those steps, right? <laughs> so, I mean, like, like I said, spending money on, you know, making it safe and making it attractive and educating people on to why they should go visit these places like that. So, you know, if you meet an, uh, the average person on the street, you could tell them like, hey, have you been here? Or do you think, I, someone can ask them, hey, do you think I should go to this place? And they say, yes, it's beautiful. I've been there. It's a wonderful site. It's safe. It's this, it's that. You know, that's educating people and pushing the locals themselves to also go and visit these, these sites. So that's definitely one of the um, 
places I believe that we should allocate funds to. Another spot, another thing I think uh, we should allocate the funds to is on advertisements. So advertisement in the sense that how do we attract people to want to come to Ghana? Ghana as a whole, not a crop. But how do we advertise that out to people? Right now, most of that advertising comes from uh, influencers, comes from people like me, for example, when I travel and I take a video of where I'm going to and share that with you guys to see. So I feel like there's more, more money needs to go into pushing people and showing other nice places in Ghana. Like when you see a commercial for Jamaica, trust and believe you're going to want to go there because they are going to take their time and show you the beautiful water and beaches and the food places you can visit and all of that. They show that and they advertise that as far as here. So I believe that the government has put money into advertisement to advertise why people should come to Ghana. So take the narrative into your hands. Don't only just let people come experience certain thing and go. Cause I believe that people have gone to Jamaica and not had the best time and experienced certain things, but you don't really hear a lot of those stories, right? Because they take the narrative. They make sure that people have a good time. They make sure that people feel safe and they take the narrative by creating that advertisement for people to see that, Hey, this is the reason why you should come to Jamaica. So I feel like we need to do that. This is the reason why you should come to Ghana, showcase more of that. And that should not only just come from the average person who's spending their money their personal money to come but the government needs to put money into that to do that not only the government but even locals who own businesses putting money into advertisement and showing people how you can even get to your location using google map or using um uber and typing this into uber and this is how you can find the you know the location all of that ties into advertisement so that's the first point that I want to make. So allocating the funds. I'm sure the funds can go to so many other places, but these are the three that really, really stood out to me in terms of allocating the funds to certain areas. So the next point that I believe that we should take into consideration if we really want tourism to build Ghana is actually teaching the locals, educating locals on the benefits of tourism and how it can improve their business. So in my previous video, when I talked about the trends in Ghana, and even I've talked about this in other videos before, um, when the Year of Return initiative began, I really believe that a lot of Ghanaians were really clueless about what was really going on, right? A lot of Ghanaians were not prepared for the Year of Return. They weren't prepared that from, from the beginning of the Year of Return till now, uh, that they were really expecting that many people to come into town. So, like I said before, that December has always been a time that people come to Ghana and there's always been a very, you know, it's been a big celebration. We, a lot of locals know that a lot of people come into town. But the numbers that have come in the past four to five years is way beyond, I think, anybody could have ever thought, you know, it could, it could have been. So, when I talk about teaching the locals the benefits, um, go, talking, like going out, and explaining to as far as to the average market woman how she can market herself to also gain money yes you probably look at me like how are you gonna go to the market woman come on the market woman they know how to get their attention if you guys have ever been in Ghana and watched shows such I forgot the name of the show but there's a show that they do and they have like I'm talking about like very big women come on the show and they dance do you know where they go to? They go to the market to do that. And they get a lot of attention and they get sponsors and they give prizes. And it probably, you know, you're probably wondering like, it's just, you know, it's just women dancing. But they've they've gone to the to the locals and they understand what they're doing and they're appealing to them. So how do we appeal to them? So by having shows that are, you know, spoken in the local dialect to explain to them or even having um, advocators going out there to explain to them how this can benefit them because 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 the, the the person that owns the shop in East Ligon cannot be the only one benefiting from tourism if we as a whole we said that we're gonna build Ghana and we're gonna take tourism uh, you know seriously we're gonna make it be an advantage for Ghana everyone has to understand how they can in, in, in a way benefit from tourism coming to Ghana um, I'm gonna use Jamaica for example 
the 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 average person in Jamaica understands that that country is, is is a tourism country. It's as simple as that. So everyone knows how they can benefit, whether they're doing it in a bad way or a good way. They know they know the people that come. They know around the time people come. So they learn all these stuff and they know how they can take advantage of it. So you 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 can go to Jamaica and during their peak season, that is when a certain restaurant or club is probably available only around that time because they know for the fact that that is when people are coming right people go as far as they know that they own a land that they can build something and use some or maybe the land has a special uh, uh, uh tree or grow something special they find a way to attract people to come and see it by pitching it to them like hey would you like to see this now I'll take it back to Boti Falls. When you go to Boti Falls, there's a town that actually, there's a town of people that live in that area that are deep up in the mountains. And you can actually walk and they can take you there. That town has a palm tree that is there. It's a three-headed palm tree. You're looking at me like, what do you mean a three-headed palm tree? It's from one root and there's three trees coming out of that one root. So the people there have met, they see that it's sacred. They believe that a God put that there, but they also saw the business in it. They saw the business aspect. They saw that if we can get people and we sell it right and we say, oh, would you like to see a three-headed palm tree? Trust and believe you'll get excited and be like, what do you mean a three-headed palm tree? Okay, take me there. Okay, when you get there, what do they tell you? Oh, they tell you superstitious stories about the palm tree and what it can do. Okay, put this money down, sit on it or touch it, and then this thing will happen for you. Someone saw how they can make money off of this. And this is sitting right on the land. Nobody built it. It's there. It's been there. So these are the things that I'm saying, like teaching and educating people as to how this can benefit them. Not, like I said, not only just the average store in East Ligon or in Consumers or in Osu or in airport, but every part of Ghana. How, how, do, how do we teach the people? How do we educate them to also understand that this can also benefit? This can be a benefit to them. They can build business out of tourism coming into Ghana. It's all about educating and teaching them how they can do that. So this is definitely another, um, you know, reason as to how we can, you know, tourism can build Ghana if we do these things. So we've talked about how um, tourism can build Ghana if we do these first two things, right? And these first two things really have to do more with um, Ghana itself and the the locals that live in Ghana, the average person that live in Ghana and how it can benefit them, how we can educate them. It's more for them. Now we're moving to the next two points is to talk about tourism itself, which is like talking about the foreigners that actually come to Ghana, right? The third point that I wanted to make was educating foreigners on how things work in Ghana. So it's as simple as I said it. Teaching foreigners what the culture is about, what to expect when you come to Ghana. This all comes in and ties in with the advertising part that I was I said previously. So teaching foreigners what to expect, how the culture works when you come to Ghana. You know, something as simple as if you hear Akwaba means welcome. If somebody, if you, if, if you're going to greet somebody, greet them with your right hand, not your left hand. Um, educating them as to like these, these certain places are sacred grounds. When you go here, you don't do this. Or around, if you come to Ghana at so, so and so time, you need to know the festivals that happen. You need to know what happens. Like there's a Ghana festival. When it comes, when you come around the, the town, the time that they do the Ghana festival, noise level is down so if you want to travel to ghana experience ghana maybe to the the ultimate max maybe that's not the best time to come to ghana so this is how we teach the foreigners like these are the things to expect when you come to ghana at so so and so time when you come to ghana from this time to this time the weather is going to be like this so prepare yourself that oh it's much hotter at this time it's much cooler at this time so these are the things that i'm saying that we we need to educate the foreigners about before coming right um, explaining certain policies and laws to them that a lot of people don't even know that it's illegal to wear army fatigue in Ghana I kid you not I'm pretty sure a lot of you are gonna be like are you serious yes I'm actually serious people do wear it and maybe get away with it because nobody sees it but if a soldier person sees you wearing his thing he's gonna ask you are you in the army and if you're not you can get in trouble for that so I mean the trouble may be just paying a fine but it's still part of the law so teaching people policies and laws if you want to even start business in Ghana these are the things these are the steps that you have to do 
even I feel like a policy that definitely should be there. I'm not sure if it's there or not, but if you do decide as a foreigner to go to Ghana and open business, I believe at least 70 to, 70 to 80% of your workers need to be Ghanaians. I say this because I, I feel like if we're going to build a country and if you're going to come down, you're not just going to exploit the people. You're not going to only pay them for the cheap labor, right? And then you fly your people from other countries to come down and say they are going to be the managers and the bosses. No, because there's people that are well qualified in Ghana who have gone to school and looking for jobs like that. And these are the type of opportunities that they need. So if these policies are in place, people will not come and play around. They will come and actually look for people who can actually do the job because the policy is in place and it's working. It's saying that you have to do this and this and that. So that's just a policy, for example, that I'm saying that could be in place and laws, you know, laws and stuff like that. And, um, you know, and requiring, you know, locals to be hired and all those, you know, things like that. So these are things that, you know, I'm just giving you guys ideas. I'm sure there's a bunch of things that you guys can think of in terms of policies and laws that need to be, you know, taught that people, it needs to be just out there in the open for people to know. This is what you expect. This is what needs to be done. If you're moving to Ghana, if, if you're, um, you're building business in Ghana, these are the things you need to do. These are the things you need to respect when you come to Ghana, because trust and believe a lot of people know about laws and things for other countries when you're traveling to us or when you're traveling to uh to europe or anything like that you know like oh when you go to this country you can't do that you you know that oh when you come to somewhere in the states uh that you most places that you know marijuana now is legal but a lot of before a lot of places it wasn't legal so people what people will you know find out or they make it notable it's clear that oh these are the laws of of the country so i think these are the things that need to be noticed we don't want people to just come and feel like they can do whatever and do anything and just get away with it because of the fact that you know nothing is working so these are some of the things that we need to work you know and we need to teach people educate people about so my last and final point um is that based on fixing certain things um we need to encourage foreigners to invest in other parts of Ghana. So this goes back to my first point um, about allocating funds to certain places. So in allocating the funds to these, you know, to places and also educating um, foreigners about certain things in Ghana, we need to push them to invest in other parts of Ghana, not just Accra. Accra is overcrowded, people. It's so overcrowded. And we need to push away from there. We need to push uh, way to other towns that you know the need the, need the attention now how do we do that we can't just tell people to come and just visit Accra and just go because everything is in Accra or the most people go is just to Cape Coast because of the castle and you know climbing on the the Kakum National uh, Forest uh, the canopy walk and or just go as far to maybe Boti Falls to go you know just to the waterfalls there are waterfalls as deep as uh, 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 um, I've, I've even been to it. I'm trying to remember the name is um, Kintampo Waterfalls. It's deep. But I, when I went, you know, the road was really bad. So it took us hours to get there. So imagine we allocate funds to facing the roads and advertising that there's all these places to visit. Just imagine how many people will go to these places and see what's lacking or what is there ready that I can improve to start a business. That's essentially what will get people to invest and start businesses when they go to these places and they see these things, right? Or you can go and realize, oh, okay, there's a lack of hotels on the roads. Maybe I need to build that. There's a lot lack of uh, rest stops. I need to build that, you know? So that pushes people to invest in other parts. So it's, 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 um, what should I say? It's it's something that just trickles down. If one thing starts and is working, is put into place, the other stuff will start falling into place. And 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 this, I mean, it's my thought, it's my process, guys. I know that some of you may agree, some of you may not, but I really think that a lot of these things, if it's if it's done right, if it's done correctly, we can really see the benefits of tourism. As for now, do we really see it? I don't know. I just see that people coming and having a great time and having so much fun. I do see that people are in bringing businesses but it's mostly to just Accra and I wanted to really venture out I want all parts of Ghana to benefit from um you know from this investment so um at the end of it you know they will see the beauty because you know the work has been done so once they visit other locations they can see the you know they can see the benefits and uh start spreading out to other parts of Ghana so we need to show them like you know 
the benefits of it, not just only just staying in Accra and enjoy, enjoying these high price paid food and all of this stuff. Like Accra is beautiful, trust me. If I go to Ghana, that's where I stay. But I eventually want to get to the point where I can invest in other places. And why would I invest in other places? Because I've seen other parts, I'm encouraged and, and I see that tourism makes sense now, like because it's affecting everywhere in Ghana. And even for a, another good example would be when people arrive at the airport, do you see any tourism like stands and sites? When you go to Mexico and you land in that airport, all you see is an influx of people chasing you. Do you want to get on this ride? I can take you on this excursion. This is the nice parts of uh, Mexico. Would you like to visit here? Would you? Like I need people in people's face when they get to the to the airport. Like, hey, I need you to do this. Like, you gotta try this. Have you been to this part of Ghana? Have you? Did this is a list of places. This is a list of sites to go to in Ghana. I've been to a lot of places in Ghana, but trust me, I have not been to a lot of places because there's more to see. But there's some places that I don't know of. I've never heard of. So if someone like me didn't take the journey to go there to discover or another, you know, YouTuber didn't, you know, t take the chances to drive five, six, seven hours to go play see the place, I probably wouldn't know about it either. But these places are there. And how would people know? How would people know that there is something missing there if they're not shown? That all ties in to the advertisement. So at the end of this whole conversation, guys, I'm saying that tourism can build Ghana. But it's not going to build Ghana if we do not put these things into place. If we don't educate, we don't make aware, we don't advertise, we don't put the funds where it needs to be going. It's not, it's going, all of this attention we're getting now is going to be in vain. So tell me guys what you think. Um, if you have any other stuff to add on to it that you think that can help um, with tourism or if you believe that none of this stuff will work or you're still thinking that Ghana's a trend and everything's going to die off, Whatever you think about it, please let me know in the comment section. Let's continue this conversation. You know I'm going to be back with something else again. And um, I'm excited to talk about this. Like I said, I'm trying to be consistent and, um, you know, have more conversations. It's nice to see the beautiful side of Ghana and stuff like that. But I really want people to be um, very interested in Ghana. I want people to invest. I want people to move back. I want people to... I really want Ghana. I really want to see Ghana, like, big. But like I said, it's not gonna it's not gonna get to that level if we don't do these certain things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure that you leave a comment below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this conversation. And leave me some ideas. What you guys think I should talk about next in terms of you know in terms of Ghana? I know there's so many there's so much more we can talk about, and I'm really curious to hear what you guys um, have to say. And uh, thank you again for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, and um, I appreciate you guys for continuing to watch my videos. Uh, I know I'm here in America and I'm not in Ghana and I'm talking about Ghana. <laughs> but uh, like I said, I love I love the place dear to my heart and um, you never know, maybe I might be moving back. <laughs> but yes, thank you, thank you guys again. Um, it's your girl Gabby Mack and I'll see you on the next video.